My name is Alex Williams, founder of The New Stack, and you are listening to The New Stack Analyst Podcast. Each week, we look at application development and management at scale. Thanks for joining us. Now on to the show. There's a lot of infrastructure out there, and it's making enormous progress, but we don't think it fits the model of distributed applications well. June 22nd, 2015. DockerCon in San Francisco. The man speaking is Docker Incorporated CTO Solomon Hikes. Because it assumes the infrastructure has a purpose of its own. But it doesn't. Computers are completely useless unless they're running your software. There's no other purpose for computers than to compute your software. And so in the distributed application model, you really want to turn things upside down. You don't want the infrastructure to be there like a landscape that you can't change and then the developer has to somehow work around it, like you'd, you'd build a little house on a hill, right? You've got to fit the, um, the topology. No, we think it should be the other way around. We think the machines should be part of the application. It was Docker's turn in the spotlight, and the young company threw down the gauntlet. Applications, not infrastructure, would be the heart of the new data center. The response from incumbent infrastructure makers has been to embrace and extend. Yeah, we're really excited about vSphere integrated containers because what we're trying to do here is bring together the best of both worlds. VMware co-CTO Kit Colbert has a special place in mind for containers on top of vSphere infrastructure. We're trying to give developers the speed and portability and agility that they want from containers while at the same time providing IT ops with the security, the visibility, and the management that they require to run these applications in production. That does not sound like what Solomon Hikes had in mind. But on August 31st, Docker Vice President David Messina published a blog post entitled VMs are a sound infrastructure for dockerized applications. In it, Messina writes, quote, The application portability that the Docker platform provides has created the freedom of choice for both developers and sysadmins to choose the right infrastructure at the right time for any given application, end quote. Did something change between June and August? I asked Docker's Senior Vice President Scott Johnston, who spoke with us by phone. I would assert uh, that there was change this June. It is um, an evolution of vendor's positioning on what's required to deploy the containers um, versus any sort of true shift in user's demand and, uh, and in the user's environment. Containers, depending on your environment, are not secure enough if, unless you use a virtualization-style solution. Ariane van de Veen is a senior principal software engineer with the Clear Containers project at Intel. If, if all the software you run is your own software and you know exactly what it is, containers are probably good enough. Someone like Google does this all the time and they're fine with that. The moment you run code that is not yours, meaning you don't trust, is where the security questions come in. The Clear that Intel is seeking is a clear path between the applications being virtualized by containers and the underlying hardware. Intel makes underlying hardware. Its Intel VT enables virtualization support on Intel processors. VMware virtual machines have clear channels of communication with Intel VT. Containers don't. Van de Veen aims to solve that problem by injecting containers with something he says they lack. If you look at what we've done with our clear containers technology, We've shown that you can make a hypervisor solution very light, meaning you can start a, you can start a container in about 150 milliseconds, and the memory overhead and density are such that you, they can run still thousands on them on a single server. That still allows you to do all the microservices benefits while adding the security of a virtual machine technology. So it's, it's not an either or, it's both. You can do both at the same time. If, if you look at the case for today, as we exist and say, are VMs more secure from an isolation standpoint than containers? The answer is pretty obvious. It, it, of course they are. Derek Collison is CEO of hybrid cloud operating system maker AppSera. Um, the issue is, is momentum around that security isolation context. Where is the momentum going? And do we think that securing the container is, is an unsolvable problem? The answer is no, it is a very solvable problem. Microservices applications are designed to scale services out as demand for services increases. But microservices never expected to coexist with VMs, 
which rely on older mechanisms such as load balancers. VMs can scale out through simple replication, but VM-based applications never anticipated communicating with participating services using APIs. Now, if you look at what VMware is preaching, it's basically coming down to, let's take containers as the most exciting thing and push it as a square thing through a round hole. Lars Herman is General Manager for Integrated Solutions at Red Hat. Because they are basically saying containers can only be trusted if you run it inside a virtual machine because this is how you get the tools and this is how you can rely on the security attributes that the hardware provides and the hypervisors provide already and you trust this already for virtualization. In production environments, conventional VMs are not going away anytime soon. Containers must coexist with VMs somehow, which means they must somehow scale together. The first strategy for dealing with this dilemma was to containerize existing VMs. According to AppSera's Derek Collison, that's not a good idea. Even if you look at the container security system as it exists today, if you take it and say, I'm going to take what was running in a VM and stick it in a container, um, which a lot of enterprises are playing around with now, that's the wrong way to do it. The alternative would appear to be integration, accepting some part of the old world into the new stack. That part could be a hypervisor. Brandon Phillips is CTO of Core OS, which makes the rocket containerization platform. In a way, if we think about the trust domain of a developer or a set of developers, a team deploying their applications on top of a set of hosts, I would argue that containers have actually given us a better security stance. Yet Phillips perceives the choice of whether to run containers in container environments or VM environments as a trade-off advantage of not having the hypervisor there is that you have a lot more flexibility. Now, this flexibility comes at a price. It means that since the application may be interacting more closely with the operating system, there's more uh, room for misconfiguration. There's more room for bugs. And so you get the advantage of increased usability and increased feature set. Um, The disadvantage is that it's a less defensive security posture. Um, And so In a lot of cases, I would argue that uh, multi-tenancy plus containers is not a very good place to be. Now, if you introduce hypervisors, you you incur a cost. That cost is a slight bit of RAM and a slight bit of CPU performance. But what you gain is that you gain the guarantees and the, uh, the infrastructure that we put in place that all these public clouds use, and you're able to utilize that to isolate your applications in a similar way. Um, So you're able to gain multi-tenancy, but you lose the flexibility. Docker Senior Vice President Scott Johnston believes that whoever makes the decision about what the trade-off should be, it won't be any one vendor. My expectation in in the world is that Docker assumes is a world that has mixed workloads where uh, VMs, VMs plus containers, containers are all coexisting, perhaps even in the same day data center uh, really being driven uh, by the users and by the new application needs um, versus any kind of hard dictate from either the vendor community or a hard dictate from any particular end user. I'm wondering whether there's a danger here that all these different frameworks might uh, flavorize, if you will, containers as they are distributed on registries and on Docker Hub. And I would be afraid that that works against the main goal of the Open Container Initiative, which is to standardize containers and to make them platform agnostic. Is this a danger, or is there a way around this? That's an interesting question, Scott. My my immediate reaction would be no, it's not, because all those different tools are using a common API to get the insight that that you're referring to. Docker has a number of APIs that give uh, insight into what's going on under the hood. There's also a Docker stack uh, command runtime tool plus an API. Uh, there's ways to look at uh, the Docker events going on in the Docker team itself. It, it's, it's from the outside that they're then consuming that data and presenting that data in different ways for different insights. Um, but they're not accessing it or, uh, if you will, flavor. I think the word you would use was flavoring it or, or distorting it. Um, just that they're, just that the container or the runtime workloads themselves are somehow um, being prevented from, from running on any infrastructure that they're reporting to. 
Red Hat produces a platform, its version of OpenStack. Lars Herman believes the way to resolve the issue of scaling both platforms is if you treat each one as an issue unto itself. The difference really is virtualization is about virtual machines. Containerization is about delivering services, scalable services. So now these two technologies, they meet in the middle, and this is what, what, what I meant with complementary. From a user experience, there of course is going to be synergy if you have the tools that allow you to manage across the stack, that, allow, that also help you optimize the interaction between these multiple layers. And that's why we invest all these uh, resources and energy into the cloud management portfolio, because that largely is a management question. But I actually don't think that virtualization is swallowing containers or the other way around. I think there are two distinct problems. Delivering services on an infrastructure pool, that's the problem containerization is out to solve. That's it for this week's show. Thank you very much for joining us. Audio editing and sound design for the New Stack Analyst podcast is provided by Broken Hours. You can find them at brokenhours.com. Thanks again, and hope to see you back at the show. Bye-bye.